How's it going out there, YouTube? My name is Jesse, and I am back for another comic book video. This will actually be the sixth video that I have done on Golden Age heroes and villains. Now, this will be the last Golden Age video, at least for now. There are still many other people I haven't covered that I can. Today, I am going to be covering Marvel or timely comic villains from the Golden Age. Now, I do not have this set up as a top 10 video because there are very few villains who were reoccurring back in the time of the Golden Age in timely comic books. A lot of them were just one and done villains. They either died or were arrested and taken to jail. There are a few who had multiple appearances and only one I can think of that is actually still in the comic books today of the research that I have done. So I'm going to go ahead and cover some of the characters that you might have seen if you're in the golden age of comic books and you can see some of what was going on back then. So we're going to kick this one off where we're going to start talking about Nazis that were in the timely comic books. Now, back in the Golden Age, the heroes fighting Nazis were more of a propaganda piece. It was to keep people's spirits into the war and not let them think that we might be losing in any way. If the heroes are fighting, hey, we can keep our spirits up. So let's go over some of the one-and-done Nazis that existed in the comic books back then. Now, of course, Mussolini and Hitler did have their spots in the timely comic books. As you can see here, as Captain America is punching Hitler in Captain America number one, where he still had his old-style shield. The Baron of Horror Castle first appeared in Captain America Comics number 42 in 1944. Is a guy who decided to live like it was the medieval ages. He didn't have any technology. He was a Nazi spy and was trying to capture some um, high-ranking officials that he could smuggle into Germany to milk them for information. He used he wore medieval armor, used uh, swords, cannons, and maces. Baron von Wetzel first appeared in Submariner Comics number 14 in 1944. He basically has a gigantic submarine that has the capable capabilities of a submarine and a U-boat. It was bigger than a normal submarine, which was an advantage and a disadvantage in many different ways. Baron Krug first appeared in Young Allies number 14 in 1944. He could emit radiation blasts from his hand. They could be strong enough to be lethal. He was immune to heat and fire. His, the radiation blasts that he fired out of his hands could be so hot that they could melt steel. Baron Von Ritter first appeared in Daring Comics number 9 in 1944. He was known as the Bloody Butcher of Istanbul. He got this title because he would brutally torture people and torture them to the point of death. He has no extraordinary powers and he often carried a Luger with him. Baron Von Hartmann first appeared in Captain America Comics number 27 in 1943. He was a German Nazi spy that was very adept at stealing secrets. Beak, and not the X-Men, this was a Beak from the Golden Age, first appeared in Captain America Comics number 22 in 1943. He had a gas gun that he used to fire various gases at his enemies. He would fire gas that would cause amnesia and a retarding gas, much like uh, mustard gas. It had the same effects. Now, of course, you wouldn't expect the Nazis to stay around for very long. I mean, I wouldn't want to see them coming back over and over again, especially when we're trying to have people inspired about the war effort. 
but they were not the only villains to be one and done. Now, I don't know if Timely had considered marketing these villains later in the future, or if they just wanted to make it look like the heroes were actually accomplishing something by having these villains only appear once. Here is a collection of villains that only had one appearance in the comic books. Um, they don't have anything to do with Nazis. They just, you know, they were here and then they were done. And that was it. The Past first appeared in All Select Comics number 5 in 1944. He used a number of bladed weapons. He used to be an actor at a theater that stopped doing Shakespearean uh, theater and started doing more modern age stuff. This angered the Tim, who would become the past, and he killed a couple of the leading actresses, and he was later stopped by the Human Torch. He's dead now. Zombo first appeared in USA Comics number two in 1941. He had the ability to hypnotize people. He also was known as Zim. Zimbo the Inhuman, not because he was an Inhuman, because he acted Inhuman. He appeared to have super strength as he was able to go punch for punch with the hero known as Rockman, who was a Golden Age hero. Professor Molsky, I think I'm saying that right, first appeared in Mystic Comics number one in 1940. He had the ability to reanimate corpses that would follow his command and of course that put him in the crosshairs of the blue blaze uh, to see the power of the blue blaze just look at my um, Marvel uh, Golden Age heroes Abra and Kadabra and that is Kadabra with a C first appeared in Marvel Mystery Comics number 84 they were a couple of stage magicians that decided to turn into a life of crime. They were later stopped and arrested and thrown in jail by the blonde phantom. Whether or not they actually had any mystic powers is to be debated. They were able to disappear in a puff of smoke and were able to turn rabbits into small monsters. Still unsure on whether it was all smoke and mirrors or whether it was actually magic. Now we're going to get into the characters that has had multiple appearances in the comic books. Um, I think the first two mainly were in the Golden Age. Uh, the third one I'm going to mention in this, I don't know if he's appeared in comics today. I haven't found any evidence of that. But the last person I'm going to be on this list is familiar to everyone and isn't going to go any away anytime soon for a number of different reasons. But let's go ahead and cover them and then you can see what Marvel was trying or Timely Comics was trying to do back then. I mean... Like I said, Timely didn't really, Marvel didn't really kick off until the 60s, so Golden Age villain staying around. And what can I say? Armless Tiger Man, also known as Eric Hertz, first appeared in Marvel, Com Marvel Mystery Comics number 26 in 1941. He specialized in combat that uses feet. Of course, he was literally armless. He had his teeth sharpened into fangs, and he had a bite that could actually bend steel. He adapted his, the use of his feet so well that he could throw daggers with his feet, and he had multiple appearances. I'm not sure how to pronounce this villain's name right because it was just a compilation name. I-S-B-I-S-A is the villain. He, his name is Simon Meek. He first appeared in All Winners Comics number 19 in 1946. He is a criminal genius and he's very adept in chemistry. He adopted the name for the type of crimes that he committed. He had crimes that was that mirrored each one of the ages over time. He had a crime from the Iron Age, Steel Age, Bronze Age, Ice Age, Stone Age, 
and Atomic Age. And that's how he um, came up with his name. He uses a suit that um, contains a breathing system and he uses gases as part of his chemistry to fight heroes. Future Man name is unrevealed. First appeared in All Winners Comics number 21, 1946. He has numerous mental powers that he claims he developed because he was born in the mil- in the year 1 million AD where they used the full extent of their brain. He is telepathic, he is telekinetic, he is able to fire mental lightning bolts from his brain, and he has been able to become intangible from time to time. Red Skull, Johann Schmidt, first appeared in Captain America Comics number 7 in 1941. Now, it, it is said that he did die at the number 6 issue of Captain America Reborn, but that has yet to be determined whether that is actually his final resting place because we saw Red Skull in Axis. Um... The Red Skull has been able to come back time and time again because he keeps transferring his brainwaves into another clone. He has artificially enhanced clone bodies, which gives him peak strength, speed, agility, stamina, durability, metabolism, and mental processing. He's got peak reflexes and peak perception. Uh, He is a strategic genius, trained in hand-to-hand combat. Now, his strength level has always been able to match that of Steve Rogers, but when he was in his robotic body, that's the time that he possessed, possessed superhuman strength, not just peak conditioning strength. And this is probably one of my shorter videos. What I wanted to do was just highlight the villains that were appearing in the Golden Age for the Marvel slash Timely comic books. Um, I hope you liked this video. It did took a little bit of research to find everything, so I would appreciate it if you give that like button a click. Um, if you like what I do, you can go ahead and subscribe to my channel. I've got a lot of videos on here, a lot of good stuff. So. If you want to watch what I do, thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, things that you think I should have put into this video that I left out, you can go ahead and leave the comment in the comment sections, or you can get me on Facebook, and I'll put the information for that in the credits. If you'd like to follow me on Tumblr, I do update that rather sporadically, and I'm going to put the information for that in the, com- in the comments as well. Let's get together. So, I hope, like I said, I hope you enjoyed all these Golden Age videos. I hope you get a chance to see them all. And until next time, I'll see you.